Do you ever want to try a different operating system like Linux or Windows 10 before you commit to it? And you didn't want to spend money on a new computer? Well, I can show you how to do that. What's up guys, my name is Kobo Man. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a virtual desktop. So basically, um, you can install a virtual version of an operating system without having to have a second PC to do so, right? So this software is called VirtualBox and it's made by VMware. So I went ahead and downloaded one of the newest version of it. And if you're interested, I'll go ahead and post a link right within the video and also in the description. So I have it already downloaded. So I'm just going to go ahead and click to install it just so you guys can see the process. This is a quick setup for this. So I'm not going to waste too much time on this. I'm just going to show you a quick setup so you can get yourself going with this and try different operating systems, right? Okay, so I have it uh, running here. I'm just going to click run. And here we go. And from here, you just click next. Uh, make sure everything's selected. If, if any of these are um, red, um, you make sure you just click on this and select entire features will be installed on local hard disk. You know, if you're unsure, you can just go ahead and click that anyways to make sure that everything that's within here is created. Here you can choose where you want to install it. Uh, by default, it tries to install the C programs, uh, C program files, Oracle VirtualBox. But in my case, I'm just going to pick a different drive because I'm pretty sure I don't have enough space to create a virtual machine on my C drive uh, because I'm using a solid state just for the operating system, which is not that big. So, of course, you got to make sure that you have a, a big enough uh, hard drive. I recommend at least uh, 50 uh, gigabytes of uh, free space. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select my G drive and I'm just going to go ahead and name it here as virtual box okay you can name it whatever you want but this is where i'm going to i'm just going to click ok and now it's going to install it in g virtual box you can leave it a default if you'd like uh, that's up to you it really doesn't matter as long as you make sure that everything here is selected to install so i'm just going to go ahead and click next and here you can leave all this um, by default and then click next and then it says here installing the virtual box um, Five network features will reset your network connection and temporarily disconnect you from the network. So that's kind of self-explanatory. And you're just going to click yes. So basically, it's just going to disconnect your internet briefly. So and then click install. OK. And once it's done, I'll get back to you guys real quick. OK, so now that it completed, I'm just going to go ahead and click finish and it's going to automatically start Oracle uh, VMware VirtualBox and let's go ahead and click finish and here we are. OK, now what it's doing here is just saying that I already have a virtual um, uh, disk image files that are uh, previously created just because I was messing around with it and there are previous um, previous files located. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, ignore this. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this because this is how it's going to look like by default. And I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to delete all these files so it's not get, so it's not confused. Okay, so this is how it's going to look like for you whenever you install a brand new, okay? So the first thing we got to do is click on File and then go ahead and click on Preferences, okay? Now, I had set mine set up to um, go to the F drive, but you can hear, uh, first thing you got to do here is basically tell a default machine folder. So if you want it to be somewhere else, that's fine too, okay? So the first thing you can do here is specify which one, and it looks like it retained my previous uh, setting, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and move it to G just like I had the installation. Okay, so I'm just going to select other and then I'm going to go select my G folder, uh, G um, drive, I'm sorry. I'm just going to click OK and I'm just going to name it Virtual OS. Okay, this is the default machine folder. So basically it's going to install all the files that are going to be created for the virtual desktop within this folder. So I'm just going to click OK. And then we're done with this part here. Okay, and there are just a couple of more steps left here, guys. Um, next thing you got to do is click New. And then here, uh, depending on what we have, I have a uh, Windows 10 um, ISO downloaded from Microsoft.com. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, name this operating system Windows 10. And uh, looks like by default it detected that uh, what I typed in, which is great. But if it didn't, um, you can use these drop down if you have a Linux. You can select this drop down here and then select Linux or whatever else you'd like to try. It looks like you can do Mac OS 10 as well if you if that's something you want to try out. That's great. Uh, but if it didn't select automatically Windows 10, um, you go ahead and select Windows 10. And that's what happened in my case. But if you have Windows 7 and 8, you could, obviously you would uh, um, select accordingly to whatever you have. Now here for the memory size, 
You can leave this by default, that's fine. It basically goes by the percentage of how much RAM you have, so it doesn't hinder your performance. Uh, I'd recommend leaving this by default. Um, here, um, it says you're going to have to have a, a virtual disk drive, okay? So where it says hard disk here, I'd leave this at default, okay? So leave this as it is, and on our next, um, next pop-up, we're going to go ahead and create a virtual hard disk. Um, so since we're done here, you don't have to do anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and click create. Okay, so we're done with this part here. And here's our um, here's a creation of virtual disk. Here you can specify the size of it. Okay, and then it says here, you know, by default it says uh, 32 gigabytes. That's why I was saying you want to have 50 gigabytes free just in case you want to actually try to install some software on it and mess around with it. So 50 gigabytes minimum. But by default, for me, it's selected 32 gigabytes, which is perfectly fine. So you can just go ahead and click, uh, so leave this by default, or you can specify if you'd like, you know. But, you know, just kind of consider uh, how much of a space that operating system may take, you know, take up, you know what I mean? So if it's Windows XP that you're trying to mess with, it may not take, you know, a gigabyte or even less than that, you know, depending on, on what's what's in it. But, um you know, newer operating systems, you definitely want a little bit more than, than that. So you want, to, I'm just going to leave it at 32. Um, you can just select here dynamically allocated, which is uh, pretty standard. You should leave that, all of this uh, by default. So again, this is just a quick setup and you just simply here create, select create. Okay. Now, just in case you wanted to go back and check these settings that we just went through, you can go ahead and select settings button here. So it's this yellow cog here. So just go ahead and select that. And here under the general tab, we can see uh, which type of, uh, what we just went through basically. You know, where I typed in Windows 10, selected Windows 10. And then here, if you click on system, here you can see how much RAM is being taken up and you can certainly adjust that on the fly. And then underneath that, if you really want to, you can select on display, and you can specify how much video RAM is being used, but you can just leave this at default, which is fine, you know, okay? Okay, so let's just go ahead and click OK from here, and then we're done with that. So in order to um, start, uh, first of all, you got to have a um, uh, Windows, uh, Windows or Linux or Mac OS X or whatever, the ISO image, you have to have it ready, obviously, right? So once you have that ready, just go ahead and either double click on here, and, or just click start. So this is basically going to this is going to start a virtual machine or a virtual desktop, if you will. So here we go. And now it's going. It may fail to boot, depending if they kept the setting from my previous. Um, and perfect. Actually, this is what I wanted to see. Um, here you have to specify where our image is. Okay. So we just have one or more step um, in order to install the operating system. So basically, it says I cannot find this ISO image or uh, Windows um, installation, um, for example, in my case, Windows installation CD. So we can simply um, remedy this issue. If we go up to here, devices, um, you go to optical drives, and then you can just select choose disk. So then from here, we would just select choose disk image. So basically here, we're just going to specify the location of our disk image or ISO file, if you will. And in my case, I went ahead and placed it in my G, um, G hard drive, and then I just went, and uh, you can just find it there and just select it, and then select open. So from here, we can just go ahead and select machine, and then reset, or we can just simply close this and reopen it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and sit, select reset, and it's asking, do you want to? And then you go ahead and say yes. And now when it reboots, it's going to start to boot um, into that um, from that ISO file. So here it comes. Okay, and just a little bit longer here, and see now you can install your operating uh, system from here just as if it was another computer. Okay, now just a real quick, uh, sometimes the, um, um, I've noticed sometimes the uh, LAN or local area network or the internet is not uh, enabled, so if you want to enable it, so there's a little icon here for uh, uh, like two little communication computers, you can just right click it and then connect network adapter. Just, that's just uh, in case it happens to you. But from here on, uh, from here you would just install the operating system like you normally would do and you would just have an operating system that you can play around with. Also, you can have multiple versions of this. So you can even run multiple virtual desktops. It's a lot of fun, guys, if you want to learn new operating systems and it can also, also be very educational too. If you want to, for example, learn about Linux, 
you can certainly install Linux, learn about it, you know, maybe get a job uh, related to Linux, which are uh, uh, very, very well paid, my ad. And, and then uh, that'll be it, guys. I really appreciate you watching this. Um, uh, if you like this video, please share it with friends and family. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.